All right, welcome to the second class. Um, we'll get started. Um, I hope you are able to see my screen. Uh, fundamentally or basically, uh, we are going to discuss what we, what I outlined for the lecture two here. And um, uh, as usual, I gave you the link for the Zoom and um, uh, the materials to read. So let us. Um, look at um, the first thing that I shared and if I can organize my I always uh, uh, this product uh, and I gather the, uh, the information. Okay, so this was the um, first item that I asked you guys to read. And um, general perspective here is that uh, I wanted to introduce in this class uh, the area of semantic web and semantic technology and semantic search. So these are the three uh, related terms uh, that I want you to be exposed to. Uh, I also want to kind of get um, some insight into the role of ontology or knowledge graph. These are very important terms today, not even just for the semantic web, but even but for deep learning and other AI techniques that we are developing today, uh, knowledge graphs, for example, or ontologies are increasingly being used to develop new generation of AI technologies. But it's very important for us to get uh, original uh, the understanding of the, um, uh, uh, the understanding of some early applications and the insights that they give us. Um, I like to remind the class that uh, please join, um, you know, as soon as possible after two fifteen and no later than two thirty, no later than two twenty. Otherwise, it will be delaying my admitting you to the class. Okay, so the most there are a lot of uses of these ontologies or knowledge graphs over the period of time, but the most enduring one is its use in the search technology. And uh, uh, the, uh, the most widely used application on internet is search, right? So when some technology gets used in search, it has huge impact, right? Um, search um, started in around, um, 1998 is what I would say more or less where the uh, 1997, 1998, where the web search have uh, started. So the, uh, can somebody um, tell me when did the World Wide Web get started? Come on, there must be somebody who should who knows when the web start uh, World Wide Web gets started. Was it two thousand, Doctor Shed? No. About thirty years ago. Yes, but. Um, Nineteen ninety or one, I think. Right, somewhere around that. Um, so the web started um, uh, at CERN, which is in Switzerland. Uh, at the Switzerland and um, France border, and uh, you guys, you guys should know the father of the uh, web, right? Yeah, Tim Berners Lee. Right. So I, I that should not be a surprise, guys. We are, you know, without that, there is practically little uh, in terms of technology that we have. So. Um, in 1989, uh, uh, he wrote a uh, kind of internal uh, memo asking for some, so the project discrete project proposal. And uh, the first, the web server, what, what, is the, what is the core of the first web technology? Web technology, the, the initial- yes, HTML documents. Yes. So the core of, the, well, HTML and what is the other thing? Tags. HTTP. Yes. Okay. 
And correspondingly, what are the two tools that came about or, or software that came about? What software supports HTML? Browsers. And what supports uh, uh, SCTV? I mean, SCTV is supported by browser, but also what is the other side? Server, HTTP server, yeah. right? So yes. the first thing that happened in the web technology was a um, implementation of HTTP server, or it was also called www or www server. Okay, and then um, initially uh, it will send out the HTML code, and it got displayed in some uh, uh, something called the www browser. Okay, it was very rudimentary with the blue links and text and the blue links as well that was in the beginning. So the thing that got started at um, uh, it, in the second half of 1990 uh, continued with this server and the um, uh, browser. By the way, does anybody know why um, they came up, uh, you know, what is the reason why they came up with this idea? What was the driving problem? Uh, DARPA wanted to communicate with other uh, military bases in and around USA? No. In fact, as a, you know, the web did not actually originate in the USA. Oh. Remember, uh, Tim Berners-Sidney work, was working for CERN, which is the Institute for High Energy Physics. Oh. The colliders, you know, usually the biggest collider has, has been, uh, things may have changed recently, but for decades, the biggest collider of high energy physics research. Uh, finding, you know, going into the, within the atoms, uh, high energy particles, all that research is being done there, right? Massive, I, I have visited there, I was invited to give a talk there, and um, massive, um, I think, oh, I don't know, um, three story high circular, uh, uh, you know, uh, pipes, round pipes that go around uh, the whole city, right? Um, so, um, but the reason why they wanted to develop was that um, the scientists, physical, particularly physicists, were generating a lot of data and uh, they wanted to be able to share with uh, their colleagues the data and the documents that they write that interpret the data, right? So, it was, it was all uh, based, uh, you know, uh, for, the, uh, for allowing the physicists initially to share the data, to uh, publish it once and have everybody access to that. Before that, only thing you had was email. So you have to send email to this person and that person sends emails to other person. And everybody had different mail client and uh, the format, you know, the um, uh, way that the formats would worry and the way you uh, uh, write article would look very different in somebody else's system. Anyway, um, with this, you publish once and everybody can, you know, look at the data at once, right? And that's what the web was started for initially, right? And it had basically browser and uh, server. Then a lot of pages got started, you know, so the webs people found out. Uh, I myself found it, uh, I was as myself first used it in 1991, very early, right? But uh, the use was cumbersome. Uh, and then one important thing happened in 1993, uh, a good browser came about. The name of the browser is uh, Mozilla. And that, you know, was a little bit pretty and you can display images also in that. And, um, you know, it really made a uh, web much more usable. With that, um, uh, people started creating pages and thousands of pages initially you have to remember the URL to, re oh, and typically the first major adoption was in uh, universities. So uh, I want, I have a paper, I'll put it up on my server and, uh, you know, uh, and put up a web page and say, here are my publications. And, you know, I remember that we had to remember, here is the, um, uh, you know, website at uh, this uh, company, Intel, or website at um, Microsoft, or website at uh, Stanford University, or whatever you know places we wanted to get data from, 
get to remember that you are so people started to organize all those links or web pages in a in a directory just like phone directory right and that is the biggest company that came from that way is anybody knows yahoo yahoo at one point of time in 1998 uh, so uh, now the uh, people were started to uh, you know the number of people um, uh, number of web pages were in uh, uh, hundreds of thousands and it started to become very hard for me and everybody else to remember uh, the links right uh, so people developed the web pages and the web page, the dictionary was maintained manually so a human hired by yahoo would take um, uh, uh, you know every page manually and organize in the directory structure and there there was a uh, lady named her name was sinija uh, she was the first ontologist ever so she was uh, uh, responsible for organizing the directory structure organizing all the web through editors manually cataloging so my web pages for example got selected on top web pages in workflow so our process become very popular for example right so they will they'll create these things and they'll manually select these are the top pages in this the most visited and so and if you get in there obviously you get a lot of um, visibility and then um, uh, uh, yahoo at one point of time had nine thousand people just editors just uh, uh, manually organizing these links it became too much it became very expensive also and then i remember that in 1998 there were um, four billion web uh, no half a billion web pages half a billion web pages Man, and you know if while there are a few thousand web pages uh, or even hundred thousand web pages per day maybe these nine thousand people can arrange it but once you create million pages a day there's no way humans are going to find all those million pages and organize it right that's when um you know several search engines came uh, there was first search engine called Excite and uh, AltaVista and all. And uh, Google started in 1997, I believe. Uh, I think they got funding in 1997 or 1998. They got $25 million for, with the lead venture capital of Sequoia. And um, uh, they really started crawling the web. And uh, first, uh, AltaVista was the best search engine. Google was not but google did one masterful thing do you remember what was that masterful thing page rank page rank what is so exciting about page rank? what is so interesting about page rank somebody else would like to dis uh, discuss that it is a um, probabilistically it assigns a ranking to pages and it, it's fast within their tech, uh, so they were able to um, give to users most relevant information so that yes, is but what is the basis of most relevant information There's a most thing. Number. i'm sorry most clicks basically um, no, no the number of links uh, a website has from other yeah. websites yes so the point here is that web is you know uh, in those days uh, it's basically a link and um are going to other link right so this page is an incoming link what does it mean it is a vote of confidence for this page for the text ahref href is a text right that's the label for which you are linking this page information on uh, you know so for example uh, there is a uh, web page which has minus gore and his page is his name is hypertext link to minus god's web page right so for the tag syntax for the string minus god this page is getting a vote of confidence more pages for you know with minus god text goes to this web page there are multiple pages let's say about minus god 
then the one that is getting that is getting most incoming link is the one what is most popular in the view of the editors who write the other pages right that is the fundamental intuition and what is this 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 is a social engineering this is a social thing meaning what other editors are what other editors deem to be important for those words for those keywords in early web there was only keywords text before before page rank became important what was the main technology for web search keyword matcher a variation of that tfids 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 and what was the, so what happened is because, uh, saying that if a word is mentioned on that page and that more times that word is mentioned mentioned is mentioned on the page then if you search for that word you will give that page which has more mention of that page a uh, rank higher so people started abusing it uh, in the, there are meta tags and there are uh, you can um, uh, you can you can encode tags on the page um, um, uh, you, you suppose suppose i want everybody who searches for um, uh, mustang car to come to me because i want to monetize it well, what I'll do is I'll write a Mustang in um, uh, a transparent text 100 times. So TFIDF will think that this is, uh, you know, Mustang is most often discussed in this page. And so it will give you high. So quality was not good because people were gaming the system. <coughs> page rank was much harder to game. It is capturing uh you know the this this vote of confidence that people are expressing on this page that's what made it more powerful so uh you know uh excite and um, um you know uh, so far the, by the way search engine had also two main technologies one is crawling finding all the pages out there and the second is uh finding which ranking which page is higher well people had done, done a lot of good work in crawling Google won out over X, uh, Excite and Altavis and other such by having the page rank. So the ranking was very important because people were getting a lot of results. And then uh, the, the thing that you're interested in on the third page, and people are very uh, lazy. They don't want to go to the third page to find what they're looking for. So Google's quality of result is what made it really successful. This was still, uh, by the way, in computer science, we call this information retrieval technology. Then uh, the next technology that Google went to is what? Knowledge graphs. No, machine learning. Basic standard machine learning. Then, um, you know, uh, somebody, uh, there's a guy named Amit Singhal uh, and all, they found the religion that uh, some of us, uh, and as you can see, Obviously, I'm going to discuss the work, uh, briefly mention the work uh, that I did in uh, 1999 and 2000. The very first patent on semantic search is this pattern. This is the very first patent. It was filed in 2000 or in 2001. By the way, it, is fi it was filed even before the very popular uh, paper by Tim Berners-Lee in 2001, uh, uh, to May came out. This was for you know and the patent was awarded in fact months after uh you know the, that paper came out but we had filed it uh, in 2000. uh if you go to the patent you'll see the year it was filed time it was filed and when it was awarded so this was the very first uh, uh, uh semantic search engine uh, uh at a scale that was built uh there was a mention of semantic search uh, of kind before in 1998 i forget now exactly but this is the first one that showed the use of knowledge graph. So what you see here on the right hand side here, this is the knowledge graph. Uh, although in those days, the word knowledge graph was not still being used. The word that was being used uh, by academics was ontologies. And remember, this is my second company. So I was interested in selling it uh, and not just publishing papers. So, um, but uh, my customers did not like, uh, know of the word ontology or if they knew it, they did not like it why not does anybody know why they don't didn't like it then because the ai 
it was it was the time of AI winter. The first uh, generation of AI in 80s had led to the development of this knowledge representation and logic based representation. And they uh, we had, um, uh, you know, uh, technology called um, um, uh, we, we had a um, um, thing called um, um, I forget the name, an owl, uh, uh, oh, sorry, oil. There were two standards that were evolving, one in US and uh, another in, um, yeah, it, it was DAML, D-A-M-L, DARPA, Agent Markup Language. It so happened that uh, the guy who is well known, uh, um, Jim Handler, was the DARPA program manager and he had a lot of money uh, to be awarded for research. And he was behind the, you know, he was a, not necessarily the developer, but, uh, you know, uh, you know, patron for uh, DAML. And um, that, uh, you know, uh, wa was used to develop these ontologies then. But uh, because AI, uh, well, it was AI winter, the AI was not uh, hot at all. The word ontology was not necessarily um, seen positively. So I, in this pattern, used two words, ontology and world model. By the way, very recently today, uh, uh, you know, in just last month or two, I saw somebody else started to use world, a world model in last few months, actually, one major company. So it's very interesting. Anyway, so, uh, and, and we had trademarked the word, uh, word model, um, but fundamentally it is knowledge represents the same as knowledge graph today. Uh, of course, the different way you, uh, you know, represent the knowledge, you know, there are many variations of that, description logic base, graph base, and, and others. So here, what we did was to develop, you know, uh, for a variety of domain, news, so politics, um, entertainment, travel, uh, sports, blah, blah, blah. Right? By the way, um, uh, here's an interesting thing uh, that happened. Um, I founded the company in August and I was looking for money, uh, you know, via venture capitals to fund this, right? Then I can grow, right? That's how the companies were growing in those days. Uh, this was internal internet bubble days. So what happened was um, I gave a, I was giving a presentation to the um, uh, uh, to the VC company and um, I any because we are doing semantic search everybody would ask so how are you better than Yahoo how are you, how are you better than Google right Google had started to get a lot of attention and uh, IBM had also developed a search engine that had crawled four billion web pages by the time I went for getting the money. So I had to show something it being better than uh, Google, right? Uh, so here's what I did. Uh, I gave a live demo on uh, a news item of what had happened in that morning. So on CNN web page, there is a new story saying that, you know, either uh, uh, some politician did something or uh, there was a plane crash or whatever those th the thing was, right? And I search for, uh, I, I use the search term such that you would get the result that was that for the item that appeared just a few minutes or a few hours ago. Google could not show it. Why? Because Google's crawler will go and all around the web and, uh, you know, they will visit the pages uh, once every few days. And they have algorithm to visit some pages more often than some pages. They, uh, well, I had a much more control, and I had a very uh, better understanding of um, you know what these terms mean. So, uh, what, what do these terms mean? So, for example, um, uh, I can search for uh, um, uh, I can search for uh, let's say. Um, uh, tiger wood and my system because it is semantic search and i'll explain to you or if you read it you will know already it knows that tiger wood is um, an entity by itself so what google did was tiger wood google will give you on the first page uh, pages about tiger and paging paging about pa pages about wood or woods because google have no understanding that tiger wood itself is a person my search engine had that understanding. This is the 
why am I discussing this? Because this is the crux of semantics. This is the simplest distinction I can show you of what semantics mean. Semantics is about meaning of the terms, right? And um, uh, you don't, you know, if you just look at the syntax, when you talk about tiger, uh, wood and tiger is a you know a word there and that matches some of the, something on the web page well that's syntax so this is the this is the way that uh, our engine did uh, you know much better than that so the vcs were investor uh, were, were excited uh, they saw that uh, we have something better than google and they funded us now uh, i can of course use story as to why we were not able to build the google I'll just give you one line uh, statement that um, in uh, April 2000, when us, uh, we already had customer and we are doing well, um, the NASDAQ, uh, the internal bubble burst. So they st the market went down very fast. And during the four years from that time, when we had to start our second round of funding, the market went down uh, and uh, the venture capitals, uh, you know, uh, they simply did not believe that you can make money using by selling ads and nobody had shown that you can sell money uh, you know selling ads so they decided not to fund company like mine and um, um, uh, when google came out in 1990 uh, 2004 uh, uh, you know to go, go public they showed that you can make money selling ads uh, so by that time it was too late. I had to my company survive, but I had to take my company uh, towards vertical. So we started selling our product, you know, our, uh, the same technology, but we started started selling applications for know your customers and anti money laundering. The 2000 uh, 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 9/11 had happened. So uh, because of that, there was that need, and we converted this company to go for vertical. That's why we could not make uh, something, you know, we could not directly go and compete with Google because of that particular thing. Anyway, uh, here uh, I want to show you a couple of things. So one of the ways you can think about semantics is that um, you can, re you know, I said you can associate mean meaning with the words. So take an example of, um, uh, you know, Madonna. And Madonna is, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, in, a, a, you know, an artist uh, in particular she is a, a singer but she also had a movie uh, called abita where in, in which she was in actress a lead actress so she was also a film actor and additionally madonna is in, is a, is also a word uh, you know in in religion and religious text so uh, when you look for madonna on the web in search, how do you know which Madonna you're talking about? Right? That because we have understanding that there are three different uh, roles for Madonna, we can give you the one that you want. So, so suppose you say that you, uh, you know, suppose you say that you are um, uh, uh, looking for music, Madonna in music context, then it will give you Madonna songs. You can also say Madonna in film. It will tell you, take you to Avita, right? <clears throat> and you can see all this metadata that the system is giving you. This is very unique. Remember, Google would, even today, uh, now Google has started to change. But 10 years ago, Google, they had no metadata. It will just give you the first uh, few words from that document. Since they had uh, knowledge graph, they could give you this, this metadata. If you do search in Google, it will have something, you know, in the search results at the bottom. Well, we already had that long time before Google did that. <clears throat> but this, the reason we could do that is because this was semantic search engine which had which had knowledge graph in the back. The other exciting thing we could do is to create this so-called rich media reference page. This is nothing but more sophisticated version than what Google does, does today in its info box. Today, if you search for uh, you know name of anybody uh, that is known, for example, anybody who has Wikipedia page or other things. Then it will show you the box on the side, right? On the right side. They call it info box or search box or whatever, you know, they changed the names, but earlier they used to call it info box. 
Here is not infobox that is even more sophisticated than today. Today, most of the infobox uh, is still uh, text, uh, some links, and uh, uh, links to external uh, sources like uh, Wikipedia or some other things. So, for example, if you search for a uh, movie related thing, they will show you probably IMDb also. We did that. Not only we did that, we have text, we have link to the videos or uh, tech, uh, audio, we had uh, metadata you can see here, and very structured metadata, okay, produced by or you know, a release date or artist. And then we have merchant uh, uh, interactive uh, advertisement, we have a semantic advertisement. So I can take you directly to the album for sale on Amazon. That is still not being done by others. So it was way ahead of the technology. Now, how did this happen? So this is the most important, uh, you know, uh, slide in terms of understanding uh, this whole thing about semantic search, uh, search and also broadly about semantic web in a way, uh, some aspects of semantic web, okay? Um, so uh, the first thing is that you really have to create the knowledge graph, right? And um, even in those days, I figured out that creating knowledge graph or ontology manually is not a workable situ uh, uh, situation, right? So we had to figure out a, you know, I want to develop something where the knowledge graph was uh, largely created and maintained largely automatically. So I did something uh, where uh, I said, I'm going to get knowledge graph from uh, semi-structured and structured sources. Because uh, getting knowledge, extracting knowledge from plain text, from, from, from unstructured text is even hard today. There is research going on that for no sure, uh, for sure. There is entity extraction from text. There is a relationship extraction from search, uh, from text. Uh, my students have also done their research uh, in those areas, but that is uh, uh, prone to a lot of errors. Quality is not good. Uh, it takes a lot of computational effort. And there are a lot of structured sources from which I can extract the knowledge. So, uh, of course, there are issues of licensing in the sense that uh, some uh, source may be there which may not allow it to be crawled for free. I won't go into those business issues, but basically what we did was to create this so-called knowledge agents or, or knowledge extractors that went to knowledge sources. So the knowledge sources could be, uh, let's say, NASDAQ website, which lists all the stocks listed on NASDAQ. Or it would be Major League Baseball website, where there will be um, a page for every uh, baseball team. And on that page will be a table showing you all the uh, you know, team, uh, you know, team members, all the players in that team at different, playing at different, you know, uh, in different roles or you go to uh, NFL, uh, uh, NFL and uh, you go to football and you know the teams uh, you know playing football and it also had schedule where they are going to play so we wrote this extractor uh, in fact we did uh, superb engineering so the extractor did not have to be coded in python or something like, like that we uh, it will give you a widget a, 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 a form and you basically be using just the um, uh, you know, syntax uh, uh, extractor uh, to get what you want on the page you want. So, um, uh, uh, anyway, this is the way, and the extractors uh, would, uh, or, or agent would made to run different times. So, for example, uh, the teams don't change uh, more very often. It changes before the, at the start of the season, and maybe it can change in the middle of the season. So, then we will crawl that only three times a year around the time and we'll schedule when you will crawl. This is the way we'll get, uh, uh, you know, and of course we'll have different sources for sports and different sports sources of finance and different sources for news. So we extracted all of that and then we created this ontology or, or same as knowledge graph. And you can search the knowledge graph also as an API that can be used by the application. Okay. Now comes another very interesting thing. So, um, you know, uh, uh, we wanted to be able to get, um, uh, you know, we want to search a lot of different kinds of uh, documents. We want to search uh, databases, XML feeds, 
uh, uh, you know, uh, emails, uh, reports, documents, web pages, everything, right? So for that, we wrote content agents. This is the same as crawlers that uh, search engines had. But it was intelligent crawler because we would do semantic processing. It's called semantic enhancement server here. And what it will do is to categorize what does that, um, uh, what, what is that content about? So the, I'll give you an example. Suppose I come across a web page where uh, Tiger Woods is, uh, you know, there's a, it's a news page, it's a page about uh, Tiger Woods uh, appearance in a particular game, uh, tournament. Here, Tiger Woods is in the context of sports, baseball. But suppose Tiger Woods is sponsoring some company, he's a spokesperson for a company, and he's, he comes up in the advertisement or as a spokesperson. Now, Tiger Woods is in the context of business. Right now, what happens? Uh, so, so the, it is very important the context in which. Remember, I gave you example earlier of um, uh, you know different contexts in which a person can be used, uh, can, can 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 be called. Um, that is done by this uh, semantic enhancement server, and that is this technology here. So, uh, I gave you the link to this uh, paper. The paper is called uh, Semantic Enhancement Engine. So this is the paper, semantic enhancement, right? And this is what, uh, this is, uh, uh, okay, so, so uh, that, let me show you a couple of interesting things. So you see here the text comes in, and then there is a text classification, and then there is domain specific meta, data that is added. And then you are traversing that and doing finding related content, and then you are creating semantic association, uh, annotation, and all of that is then uh, you know uh, stored and then of course is used by things. So let me let's look at a couple of things. So this, um, uh, many of you know about classification. I hope you all do. Uh, so you can see here there are various machine learning classifiers. Now remember, this was year 2000, 2001. So your Bayesian, HMM with different you know conditions and length and other things, um, and and then here is here is the master knowledge base. So and then we had a uh, uh, we had a uh, you know um, uh, technique that uh, well known technique uh, that essentially combines all the classifier. It's called boosting that will get you the best of the world. But um, what was interesting is that here you see, um, these are all the various classifiers and the performance, but the knowledge base, uh, one that used knowledge graph ontology was very, very high and there's slight boost to that using combined. What's very interesting is even after we had these results, so many people continue to just bank upon all of these uh, machine learning things. Machine learning was very big uh, until, you know, all the way in the first century of the uh, first, first decade of the century. Here clearly shows if you use knowledge base, see how well it does. It takes long time. For many, many years, um, people in the uh, machine learning community did not pay attention to that. Now, and this is, you know, something for all of you guys, Manas and Kaushik and Vedant and Vishal and all of you guys. Now everybody pays attention. This is this is what is driving knowledge infused learning, right? The idea, I had that idea a long time ago. We had a product for that. It takes time to mature this. Let me show you another interesting thing that happens. So here is a, a document, and here it shows semantic annotations of um, you know this document. So the interesting thing here is see what is happening. Look at. Uh, you can see that the system knows what are various, the, these are all entities. And there are some special types of entity called, you know, phrase or, uh, you know, uh, so this is a phrase it says, and there, are, there's, there may be something that says this is a time, for example. Or so it will be, um, you know, and this is, see it says this is a dollar item, uh, meaning it is a, a currency. So system understands those things. 
it understands uh, so because i you know have the um, stock market information in my knowledge graph uh, this is a company that no longer exists uh, you know uh, oracle bought it but um, it understands that home depot is a company in hd here is the stock symbol right and it is it, it can then understand the syntax up stock is up today understands it not not just keyword it understands it and from the, by this dollar to that dollar so and then it is it can do these things that no no other search engine could do those days the standard and poor's 500 index one two three four five six this is a six gram tell me first machine learning technique vector based technique that could do well with six gram anybody manas Kaushik? No. No, I don't think any machine learning technique can do it. So more this than is, so 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 it, it look this shows you in year 2000, 2001 for such things. Now standards and poor finite index is a very important thing if you are in a, a finance. Uh, here is uh, you know uh, uh, here is uh, another one Dow Jones Industrial Average. These are all critical thing in the business. And those search engines simply could not understand it. Neither could uh, you do well with information retail, nor could you do that well with machine learning. So I have a question. Sure. Uh, let's say this document hmm. was fed into some machine learning system. Yeah. They would attach to it some label. Yeah. Because that is how the setup is. Yeah. But it's clear from this document, if anybody's ever seen it, that there's more meaning here than one label, right? Yeah. So why hasn't more effort been put in trying to build a system that can parse uh, input to output, but the output being these labels and input being anything else about this document? Well, without having something like a model, a knowledge graph, uh, an ontology, which says that there happens to be a financial index and he, these are all the financial index, uh, the uh, Standard and Poor's Fire Index, the uh, all you know market index, the Dow Jones Index, S and P, you know, uh, without having those uh, somewhere in the pipeline, you can't do it, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you you know uh, a human reading this knows that the Dow Jones. That's a knowledge, right. and we are applying. That's why I've been talking. You know, how do you bring that? So you, if you don't have a model of the world, I call it world model or ontology or knowledge graph, there is no way for system to find out just from the text. That's why we always said that statistical AI is only a partial solution to problems, right? very partial actually. Right? So you had to essentially have this external knowledge that these are indices of value. These are companies that are currently stored, uh, traded in the stock market. That this is an openly traded company and this is a private company that is not openly traded. How can you get it from text? You don't. And maybe we can uh, have a conversation if you're interested uh, on why uh, people fail to use this for such a long time. I can because I, you know, have seen this industry uh, for mm -hmm. such a long time, and actually have played both from academic and uh, commercial perspective, uh, business perspective, I can I can give you a lot of insights into why people did not go this route. Only now they are doing it. Look at this. This is 2000, 2001, 2002, and what is the article date? This article date is 2002. So clearly, technology was developed well before that. I, I remember yeah, this. That is what I was asking. That why didn't the why did the idea of a label being a, just a stamp on the document catch on instead of something richer? Uh, was there a, a reason? No, nobody <laughs> nobody uh, caught on to this uh, technology, this patent that we had, and this technology uh, other than uh, until uh, Google started. Google came out with this knowledge graph based search engine. There was a decade long thing. I have another uh, article you might be interested where I have shown that it takes 15 years for many technologies to actually go uh, at a uh, at the full scale that it should be. 
Uh, and, and so before that, I had another, I was involved in another product. It was Federal Data's product. It also took 15 years from the time that we built in our Honeywell and uh, Unisys um, uh, uh, company, I was working for them. Uh, and my, you know, I was part of the projects that built those products. It took IBM 15 years to come on a product after that, after the initial products were built, systems were built. So uh, this has a lot of other things. Recently, you might have seen my uh, comment on, um, there was a comment on LinkedIn about, um, uh, 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 are the MBAs good for you know company? And I gave my example that um, mm -hmm. uh, the product before this one that I you know built at uh, that I started at uh, Belcore was the first product for doing faceted search on a browser, Mozilla browser. So I started that product project in 1993, and we had a commercial product in 1995. But what happened was that uh, I said this is internet is coming becoming big, web is becoming will become big. And my company said, but we have a process whether we invest in developing a product or not. So they brought in three uh, MBAs. And the MBAs guys had no idea what the hell is internet in 1994. They had no idea what is internet and all that. Uh, and web. So they said, they came up with a report saying there is no market for this. So they did not allow me to make this into a web product. I, I still made it a product, but only for limited market of uh, uh, current customer of uh, then customers of the uh, Belcore. So the point is that um, there are the other issues also. Um, uh, the semantic web community made a big mistake. So the term semantic web was coined by um, uh, Tim Berners-Lee. Uh, uh, I mean, you know, people will say 2001 paper that he came out in May with Handler and Osila. That is often what is cited, but he used that term also in his uh, Weaving the Web book that came out in 1999 and 2000. Uh, but I had used the word uh, 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 semantic information brokering um, with my student Vipul Kashyap. So sometimes what happens is that um, uh, uh, there's a lot of psychology, uh, you know, that you know, plays a huge role. So uh, just like earlier, as I said, the psychology was for business people not to pay attention. They did not like the word ontology, so they will not believe that your product can scale, right? And um, hence, um, I had to uh, use the word world model then. And uh, well, knowledge graph was not in vogue at all. Uh, the power, you know, and the semantic information written, I have published a report in 1993 and uh, published paper in CIKM in 1994 with Vipul, where we talked about use of ontologies for searching multiple databases. And we, a, a, one of the databases can be web, worldwide web. For, unfortunately, web was still not as powerful, so we kept it at, you know, this vague term in semantic information programming the power of you know it is timorously using the word semantic web a simple powerful word web is already powerful and just adding semantics made it much easier so don't uh, try not to define the words try to co-op them or bring them together uh, that's why you know we pay sometimes pay attention to the terms that we use uh, when we, we call out something that we build and here the other thing was that people did not believe so when I went to um, Yahoo and say, I can do this product that can do better than uh, Google. Uh, I also went to um, uh, Alta Vista. Uh, they did not believe it because they did not think I can build the knowledge graph or, or ontology in a scalable manner. Mm -hmm. I could and I had that built already and yet they could not, uh, you know, uh, fathom it. So they did not buy it. I had a joint project with IBM. Uh, IBM had a very big project called Web Fountain, which is what a couple of my students did internship with. Actually, Mina's internship also was arranged around that time. Uh, and then uh, we had linked our, uh, our, our our two products. So Web Fountain was like a search system with miners. And we, we had the semantic uh, technology. We, we had linked them. Unfortunately, IBM uh, could not build a business around uh, you know that, that technology. So they shut it down. So, so I, I couldn't find IBM as a way to get out uh, into enterprise market. Anyway, 
So, uh, uh, so this, in this kind of things, Kaushik, basically intuition are, is very important. And, uh, you know, and, and it, you, it is remarkable that how people are um, brand even. So if was Tim Berners-Lee used the word, it was, it spread much more. Although mm -hmm. I was lucky, I gave the very first keynote on that topic. And um, uh, uh, the same way as once Google came out with, um, uh, with, with uh, uh, you know, search engine in 2013, then everybody say, oh, knowledge graph is, you know, start paying to attention knowledge graph. So that is unfortunately the case, right? Uh, today, uh, I share with you guys um, this uh, 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 New Rips uh, workshop uh, panel, right? Where Etsioni and other guys are there. Yeah. I also, uh, you also heard the Montreal AI debate too. Now think back, uh, there's some lot of interesting things that they said, but the core of it is something that we have talked about in, I, in my, you can find it in my videos and uh, things for many years ago, right? Uh, right. So, 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 you know, A, it takes some inertia, B, the seductiveness of the term machine learning. It gives, because uh, business decisions are made by people who don't know anything about technology most of the time. And they mm -hmm. conjecture up intelligence with machine learning. So they give the money and hence uh, the, you know, technologies you would use you know, to build the products for which there is money. And there's another very interesting thing, very interesting thing. Think about the coursework that you guys take, all of you take. Very seldom in your curriculum, there is a course on knowledge graph, uh, oh, sorry, on knowledge representation or logic. And log if you go with logic, that will only do part of the work. It will really not get you what you need to get for this. And we don't even have a uh, you know course on knowledge representation. So how mm -hmm. would you you don't you, we just are not taught and exposed to this very powerful thing. We are really taught about programming. You are taught about you are taught data structures. You are taught um, you know uh, 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 information retrieval. You are taught machine learning, but you are not taught knowledge representation. Well, that that is why this has remained a bit outside for quite some time. I started teaching my course on semantic web in 2001, imagine. But, to, you know, let's say in 2005, there might be thousand code, you know, uh, places where machine learning might be taught. There are still handful of places where a semantic web and a knowledge representation was taught. That is, that is one reason why it is. Anyway, it gave us some more time to develop what we are doing. Um, we can't, you know, we have to see positive side of that too. Okay. Now, um, uh, let me pause. Any questions? By the way, this was a beautiful piece of uh, article that somebody wrote, uh, that, that so I had an interview. This is in year 2000, August 10, 2000, okay? And here, uh, this in this interview with me, so my company was called Tali at that point. This is a company called Tali Venture, and then it says Indian Semantic Aman. <laughs> Someone, anyway, and and uh, co-founder is Ajay Chopra. Ajay Chopra uh, had a pinnacle uh, public company. He is uh, Trinity Ventures uh, uh, general partner now. Uh, uh, but uh, here is a very you know here is a very interesting example that he does. So you talk about Roger Clement. So you look at, you should read about this and it's so, you know, he's captured it so well. Um, uh, there's also, by the way, association because the idea of semantic association is already there. In fact, this is the association idea that I gave to uh, Kema for in 2001. So we had a paper in 2002 on semantic association and then Kema for had the, you know, these well-known papers in, um, 2003, 5, and 7 uh, worldwide web. So uh, if you're assigning meaning to an object, mm -hmm. it could be characteristics about it, what people call features. It can be that, say, Obama is linked to all these other objects through mm -hmm. some relationships. 
but that would just mean that obama and donald trump are the same thing because probably at a higher level schematic structure they're linked to the same things but they're different because of say the actions that they perform or some other facet of their personality so who decided that semantics means uh, limited to uh, node linking another node is it because a machine can read that easily and no. that's why you stop at that level or to the extent i understand your question um, uh, i think you are talking about uh, uh, some of the interpretations of semantic which are more limited in form is that what you're talking about yeah i i'm not sure that everything is captured in node linking another node through no, it's relation. not it's absolutely not and you you know very good point so you know here is what happened when i uh, when we built this uh, you know tali semantic engine that later on becomes semagics uh, tali became vocad vocad becomes semagics um the um, search engine had to deal with uh, uh, hundreds of billions of web pages so that scalability has many other aspects of it right the amount of quote unquote knowledge level of information would be roughly as big as um, um, uh, data level information in the, the size of the data. So the rule of thumb is that um, um, if you have manually created metadata, which means, you know, for example, suppose there's this page and this page has Roger Clemens or Tali or Amit Sheth or Indian. These are all, uh, or, or the shish kebab. Uh, these are all you know, entities, suppose a human were to tag all of these things, um, the total overall size of that metadata is called metadata, right? And the relationship that, uh, uh, you know, I'm, Tal is my brainchild, so I, you know, I'm the CEO of the company. Uh, uh, that um, would be uh, smaller in size to the text. But when we actually implement a, uh, a, 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 an automated way of uh, associating metadata or entity identification, relationship extraction, all that. The actual amount of metadata that we can create for this is of the size of the data or larger. Hmm. Now became now came the problem of funda fundamental uh, problem of scalability and performance. So what happened is that. Um, uh, the semantic web. Remember, you see, if you look at this, uh, there's a big problem here. Uh, a problem is that I use the word, <clears throat> uh, I, I played the game here. <clears throat> I play the game of using semantic web because I'm an academic researcher at heart, right? And uh, I um, wanted to, you know, to, you know, I, I, you know, I, I, this is really using semantic web technologies, semantic technologies. Um, the knowledge graph ontology representatives was in a form that is uh, uh, a uh, uh, very close to RDF. My first paper on RDF was in 1998, so I was already familiar with 90, uh, RDF uh, then. Um, uh, there's a paper on MRF in 1996 and then 1998. That use uh, that was uh, one of the earliest paper on that showed power of uh, a relationship on the web. <clears throat> um, the uh, so so. But but then I also did semantic uh, search browsing, which are these are all normal applications, web applications. So I was trying to play both the games. I also used ontology for researchers and um, technologies because my, my one foot was in uh, research, and I use real world model for those who are uh, you know not um, uh, for for industry people. Okay. So then. Um, uh, but point that came is that uh, the semantic web people made a big mistake and particular semantic web people in the sense of Tim Berners-Lee and Jim Handler and those guys uh, in my view uh, and uh, you know may, and then a lot of other people combined with that they chose uh, because the Daml oil and then became uh, owl the web ontology language that's description logic based right they chose description logic as the representational format. And um, there are two issues. One uh, uh, practical and one uh, uh, theoretical or, or, or formal. 
So the particular issue is that um, uh, logic-based system had a big problem that few people know it because students are not taught. And it is, second problem is it is not scalable. And the practical problem is, uh, sorry, few people were taught and a uh, lot of programmers don't know it. So that is the practical problem. And that, uh, you know, the logic-based languages are, uh, you know, they, 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 they have to, uh, they constantly pay attention to uh, expressiveness versus performance uh, trade-off. And they went into the issues like completeness of knowledge representation. This is practically, for most practical situations, an unsolvable problem and it's very costly. And uh, they go into this side issues that have very little practical, uh, you know, value. Uh, so, uh, uh, the people who started to build semantic web based on uh, OWL went around the rabbit hole in some sense. And um, when industry looked at it, they said, mm -hmm, that's not going to work for us. You know, show me an OWL system with billion facts. And that, that was a huge problem in those days. Later on, we could develop it, but uh, after 2005, but before that, it was not possible. And hence, the second one was that people like me who were advocate for more particular aspects of semantic web we said we don't want OWL, we, we are not going to go OWL, we'll be happy with graph representation, uh, a, 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 a property graph basically, mm -hmm. uh, or RDF. So actually what we had internally was property graph, uh, you know, so we, in that, that scale, much more. Of course, anything with graph can have problems also, right? I mean, it's a pretty demanding thing, but still, you know, uh, it's much scale far, far better than uh, two orders of magnitude or more than, than, than the logic based system. So we could build these practical things. Uh, and uh, because those guys who just uh, kind of half of the semantic web community and majority of the academic semantic web community went through all, they failed to convince the industry to build and industry people started to, disc they, they discounted it. So that may be a reason why, even though we showed these powerful results, many other technologies might you know, think that, oh, semantic web, that's not scalable. So we're not going to use it. Uh, so there are often these psychological behavioral uh, aspects about uh, uh, you know uh, the issues. But your your point is that um, um, uh, by choosing the right level of metadata and uh, and annotations, you can scale and you can do fine. Right. Uh... This years about which you're talking about 2000 and 2001, uh, say Craig Butelli or Scott Sanard, um, I'm not sure that you've heard of them. They have, were coming up with representations that can uh, disambiguate action knowledge or frame knowledge in planning or other things. They used to call it frame problems, so they came up with situation calculus. I was just wondering uh, what were the driving force behind the current standard for machine learning where representation of an object is features and the annotation on the object is label when there is just infinitely more richer um, possibilities on both sides. Uh, yeah, uh, by the way, I deal with uh, uh, KL1. Uh, I have a paper in 1993 on schema integration that uses KL1 uh, and these are the frame logic based, you know, systems, frame based systems. Um, so, um, because of the, um, okay, I think we, we're going to take this question aside, we'll discuss later because I'm not sure the whole uh, class will appreciate this thing. Yeah, and and okay. I, I need to cover other things, but uh, it's, it's a good thing to discuss later on. All right, so, uh, uh, anyway, I'm not going to talk more about this. Uh, now, this is the fundamental, uh, in the core of what I wanted to talk to you about. Let me just briefly go and see if there's any comment. That, first of all, uh, do you guys want to ask any questions um, uh, on, on this particular thing that I asked you to read? By the way, this is, see, this is um, uh, Google's uh, uh, info box. And this is, uh, you know, uh, this is the thing that we had developed, which uh, is far richer than Google's info box, at least when I wrote this one. Uh, uh, and, and there is a lot more to that, uh, right, to this, and uh, I also gave you uh, links to the, um, uh, this year. So this is the, 
uh, you know, uh, work uh, where you will see uh, made comment about a, a, a more of a you know logic uh, driven side of the semantic web. And so this these particular videos are for that part of semantic web. If any one of you are interested, I don't know why it's not. Hmm. Should I open this link? Yeah. Uh, uh, you know if. It did not open for you also let me know i'll try to find the but this is a video lecture on 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 on, on semantic web so it talks about the um, form of the vision that uh, some of the people in logic based systems had okay so um uh, there's a lot more than this uh, there is a uh, highly viewed um uh, i think uh, there is a highly viewed um uh, you know uh, kind of a, a talk on, on on semantic uh what is semantic web um let me let me ask you that so let me just um mm, let me see uh if you can find it youtube yeah i see and let's see if you'll find me introduction to semantic web. Yeah, no, my talk is not coming up here. These guys have very poor advanced semantic web. It's called Internet of Things. Yeah, one of them, you know, there's a lecture on uh, introduction to semantic web, and that, um, uh, uh, you know, I think it gives a very clear and I think uh, easy to uh, appreciate introduction in a semantic web. Oh, yeah, maybe this one. Yeah, no, no, it's not this one, but uh, yeah, semantic web intro and overview. So this, this, um, uh, you know, uh, yeah, I, no, not this video, but the um, slides are very heavily viewed. Um, anyway, uh, so um, some of the things I said in more expanded form is here uh, in this class uh, lecture, and uh, um, uh, you're welcome to look at that also. All right, uh, the question or anything that you guys uh, want to talk about for for semantics, semantic web, we are just scratching the surface. But, um, you know, if you think about it, uh, I mean, the, the more you know, important reason to talk about this is that this knowledge, semantics are again uh, playing very big role in AI of today. So that is, uh, you know, one of the reasons why uh, we are doing that. Um, there's another interesting thing that's happening. Um, um, all these companies are now, um, jumping you know going into use of semantics and, and knowledge graph uh, for example uh, one of my PA student went to a, a research group at Amazon and uh, he called me back after a few months and says Roshet uh, it's very interesting here that there's no project that I'm around where does not which does not use knowledge graph so um, and uh, you know products like Alexa or CD or Google assistants, they use uh, knowledge graph heavily uh, also. Uh, they use very simpler form of the knowledge graph and very limited version, but still they are using it and then you know eventually they will add more. But basically, if you're interested, knowledge graphs are being used by all of these guys and many more. So it's important to, uh, you know, it's, it's a technology that will further grow and it's very, uh, my view is that, um, uh, if you only learn machine learning or deep learning, you will only get a part way. That is very important to get the other side of the story, other side of the coin, which is uh, semantics and knowledge. Okay, question guys? Uh, sir, I have a question. Yeah, and uh, guys, uh, after, you know, let's, let's turn on the um, 
it's not 100% requirement, but I prefer that you guys use the video. So it looks like we are in a class. Otherwise, it looks so impersonal. So um, I invite all of you to use a video. So you can know who your partners are and all, just, just for the sense of it. Okay, go ahead. Uh, sir, I had a question. Mm -hmm. uh, right now on web browsers, uh, the no, are, are the knowledge graphs only limited to uh, searches? Like we have billions of pages and uh, we don't see links to the uh, on the pages links link to other pages. Like Wikipedia, it's uh, if we if we do searches on Wikipedia, the pages are linked together, but not the whole web is as such linked together. So, uh, uh, is there any work which is going on linking pages together, so that the uh, uh, so that the web 3.0 vision can be achieved? So, um, there use it is possible for some of the search engines to actually show the links behind the uh, text on a page that is being displayed. It is just that if they do that, then it looks very um, uh, it, it, it distracting. So, um, uh, if when a page is displayed, that page has been crawled, and uh, let's say by Google search. And it has been already annotated. So in theory, it can put the link back into that and show it to you. But if it does that, it is changing the original form. And there may be a legal issue in changing the form of the original content because uh, Google does not own that content. And plus, it will be highly distracting. And they don't see how they are going to get more money out of doing that. So it's, I think it's more of a practical reason than uh, whether they show it or not show it. Okay, um, so guys, uh, um, today's uh, time is up, but I would, as I said, I like you guys to be more interactive um, and uh, in ask questions. And uh, right now, I'm unable to. Uh, let me do one thing here.